What's up everyone? It's good to see you all again so soon. I'm Jeff with Polar Pro. For those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. It's great to have you here. And today we are going to be going over exposure, shutter speed, and filter theory for the Osmo Pocket. So I'm gonna to try to condense as much camera theory as I can into this video, starting with exposure. So exposure controls how much light enters the camera system, and essentially there's three ways a camera controls light entering the system. ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. These three parameters are the only things that control the amount of light entering the system. So if you let too much light in, you get overexposure, if you don't let enough light in, you get underexposure. And if you let just the right amount of light in, you get the perfect exposure. And that's exactly what we're going for. And to best show how these three things work together, I'm gonna visually show you. I'm gonna have this shovel here represent shutter speed. I'm gonna have to use this pine cone represent aperture and we'll use this glove to represent ISO. So we'll say that this right here is the perfect exposure given this amount of ambient lighting. Now you can manipulate your camera settings to achieve different results or different looks. Like you can change shutter speed up or down to either introduce some blur motion or reduce it. You can change your aperture up or down to increase or decrease depth of field. And then you could also change ISO ISO is pretty much just a digital gain though. You don't want to crank it too high, otherwise it introduces a little bit of noise. <laughs> so the snowplow just came and literally plowed, plowed our driveway. So it's actually a good thing because it'll be easier to see our shutter speed aperture in ISO shovel. So if I want to say, hey shutter speed, I want you to be one stop lower because I want to introduce some blur motion into my frame or image. You can't just lower it by one stop because that's gonna let one stop of excess light in and overexpose your image. So what you have to do is offset that one stop reduction by an increase in aperture by one stop or an increase in ISO by one stop in order to maintain a perfect exposure for the current ambient lighting conditions. So now you're probably like, hey Jeff, the Osmo Pocket has a fixed aperture that I can't change. So what do I do if I want to lower shutter speed? Well, actually there's not much you can do because ISO doesn't go below 100. So what that means is that you're pretty much always stuck with whatever shutter speed it takes to get a perfect exposure for whatever natural ambient lighting condition you have present. Which means you're going to be stuck with a higher shutter speed if you're filming outdoors. So I was going to take the sled up to the mountain today, but it got really windy up there and the avi risk is a little bit too high for my liking. So I'm actually going to run the shutter speed test right here in the neighborhood, even though you're not supposed to ride snowmobiles on the streets. So what's wrong with shooting at higher shutter speeds? Well, nothing really. There's nothing wrong or bad about shooting with higher shutter speeds. It just comes down to how you want your audience to absorb your content. Personally, I like to shoot all of my video with shutter speed at double frame rate. And this would be considered a lower shutter speed, which is gonna introduce a little bit of blurring into each frame. So when you play it back, it mimics motion the same way that we perceive it in real life. Like this camera right here is shooting at 1 60th with a 30 frame rate. And you can see when I'm waving my arm, it's blurring that motion just like we perceive that same motion in real life. And this shutter speed to frame rate ratio that I'm shooting at today is called the 180 degree rule of shutter. And this is commonly used by feature films and Hollywood directors of photography which is why a lot of people refer to this shutter speed as cinematic shutter speeds. Whew, storm's rolling in. So these higher shutter speeds are not gonna have any blurring in each frame, which can cause the video to look jittery and unnatural. And I'm gonna illustrate this by flying by the camera on the snowmobile with a high shutter speed, and then also at the 180 degree rule of shutter, a lower shutter speed.
Oh, I had to put a neck gaiter on. It got a little cold out here. So your audience might not consciously pick up on if you're shooting at a higher shutter speed or not. Now, they're not gonna be like, oh, hey, the motion in your footage doesn't mimic the same way that I perceive it in real life. They're gonna subconsciously notice though, their brain's gonna be telling them, hey, something in this footage doesn't look right. I don't know exactly what it is that's not right. And that's gonna actually create an anxiety. And cinematographers will sometimes use this, they'll shoot at higher shutter speeds or higher frame rates to create anxiety for their audience for movies like Saving Private Ryan. Okay, to summarize, cinematic shutter speeds are when shutter speed is equal to double frame rate. So if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, shutter speed's at 1 60th. If you're shooting at 60 frames per second, shutter speed's at 1 120th. And back to the Osmo Pocket. So I've got everything set up here, shooting at 30 frames per second. So I'm just gonna slide shutter speed into that cinematic level at 1 60th. And what the f Oh, that's right. I can't change shutter speed without offsetting it with either an aperture change or an ISO change. But right now, I can't move aperture because it's an Osmo Pocket and ISO's already maxed out at 100. Oh well, guess we just won't film today. Guess I'm gonna get packed up here. Thanks for watching everybody. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to hit that sub. Oh, wait a second. Wait a minute. That's right, filters. The fourth way to control how much light enters into your camera system. Now we can reduce shutter speed by four stops and offset that excess light coming in now by installing a four stop ND16 filter, bringing us back to a perfect exposure. So for today's lighting conditions, it's actually pretty bright even though it's snowing. I don't know how that's possible but we needed to push shutter speed five stops to get it to 1 60th, which means that we had to reduce five stops of light to get the perfect exposure. Now, if it was darker out, we might only need two or three stops to get shutter in the sweet spot, and we would only need a corresponding two or three stop filter. On the other hand, if it was perfectly sunny and really bright out, probably need about six stops to get this thing perfectly balanced which would need an ND64 or a six stop filter. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about right now and have no idea what stops of light are, don't worry. Just make sure that your EV is plus or minus 0.7. So if your EV is negative one, that means it's one stop underexposed. That means you need the next filter down. So if you were at an ND8, you would move down to an ND4 because you're reducing too much light at that point or vice versa, if you were at plus one, that means you're one stop overexposed. That need, means you need a little bit more light reduced, so you would move from an ND8 to an ND16 filter. But once you get EV in between plus or minus 0.7, you're good to go, and you'll be able to make any exposure adjustments in post. And if you don't have ND filters, do not worry. We have created a custom six pack so this is our standard series six pack. It features a recreational grade glass. It's only 79 bucks and it includes ND4 through ND64 filters to cover pretty much any lighting condition with the Osmo Pocket. And for our professional users, we have the Cinema Series line, which features a production grade glass, which has a lower refractive index and rotatable NDPL filters. And I recommend actually getting all three of them, the Vivid, Shutter, and Limited collection, because that's gonna give you a full line of straight ND filters and a full line of NDPL filters. So you can use the straight ND filters for compositions that you wanna be more kind of color neutral, and you use the NDPLs when you want your videos or photos to really pop, be a little bit contrasty and more saturated. Well, I hope you learned a thing or two today about shutter speed, filters, and exposure. Be sure to check out the link below to see the whole line of filters and mounts we offer for the Osmo Pocket. Myself and the other 24 of us at Polar Pro would greatly appreciate you choosing our brand. 
I'm Jeff with Polar Pro. I'll see you very soon, probably next week.